to walk you through just the basics of using PayPal Zettle. So as we talked about before, PayPal Zettle is a free point of sale system. Of course, just like with any card processing company that you go through, whether it's PayPal or Square, uh, to name a few examples, you're going to pay a very small processing fee every time you collect payment from someone, but that is how all of these businesses work. We need to pay a small fee in order to process cards. So, but the app itself is free. So first you're going to go ahead to the web browser, log in. And the first thing that you're going to do is go to your settings and set your sales tax. So you wanna do that before you do anything else. So go to your settings and click tax settings. Now, if you don't know what your sales tax is, you will want to Google this. So you simply go to Google and type in the name of your city, the state, and then sales tax. So for me, I live in Fargo. So if I need to figure out what Fargo sales tax is, I go to Google and type in Fargo, North Dakota sales tax. And for me, it is 7.5. So you want to find out what your sales tax is, put that in here, and then make it your default. And while you're under tax settings, scroll down and you have the option to add tax automatically to the pricing. So for example, if someone buys a bottle of the Coochie Shave Cream, do you want it to say $24 and not include tax and have that be separately? Or do you want it to say like 26 something and have the tax included in the product pricing? I like to exclude it so that they see the actual retail price of the product and then tax will be added separately at checkout. I think that in general, like it's just easier for a person's mind to see what the retail value of the product is. And then at the very end, see that tax is separately. Um, that's how everything is normally when you go and shop, the tax is added at the very bottom. So I like to exclude that, but it is up to you if you want to include it. Um, that's just a personal preference. All right. So now you're going to go to products and product library. So when you are setting this up, it is not gonna show you all of the products. It just shows it on mine because I already did this. For you, it's going to give you the option to import or add a product individually. So to make life easier for you, I have a product sheet already created. So all you have to do is click on this link that I sent you and go to file and then um, download. So download as a comma separated value, so CSV. Um, you cannot make any edits to my copy just because this is my personal copy, but for you, go ahead and download to comma separated value, and then you're going to import. So when you click import, it's going to ask you some stuff, but I already did all the work for you. So upload from your computer, upload the document, you will see it under downloads, and then click import. So all of the work is already done for you. The only thing I will say about this document is I wouldn't edit anything in here. Like don't change the columns or anything like that just because Zettle does have a specific format that this document needs to be uploaded. And if you change anything up here, it's going to be super wonky and might not work. I will say under cost price, I did make this generic to 50%. I know some of you are at a 30%, some of you are at a 40% profit, but I'm assuming that everybody is going to be placing their orders during a sale that corporate gives us. So most of us are actually shopping at a 50% commission because we're shopping smart and shopping on a sale day. If you are at a 30% or 40% buying discount and you would rather have that reflected, then as you um, download your copy and open it, you can change this to 30 or 40%. But otherwise, if you wanna leave it at 50% and know that you're always gonna be shopping on an extra sale day, then you can leave it as is. But I did just want to uh, let you guys know that's why the cost price is what it is because I'm assuming everybody is ordering on a sale day. After you upload your products, this is what it'll show you on the website. If there's ever a new product launch or if you have some limited edition products that are no longer current, but you have some in stock, you can individually add a product by clicking this button here, enter the name, 
category type, I already included it for you. So here's the different categories. Enter the price point, your cost. You can add pictures if you want, but that is super time consuming and it's not needed. Um, so, but you can if you want to. Um, and then everything is already predetermined. Like the sales tax is automatically added in there because you already sent that out, but that is how to add a new product. You can also do this within the app. So one thing I just want to point out is one thing I will say about the Zettle website is you cannot add customers to it. And you also cannot send out an invoice through the actual website. The website is great to quickly upload products as well as view different reports, which I'll go through the different reports in a little bit. We're going to do a mock order so you can see what it's like to use a set of party. So let's say you're in the ordering room and someone wants a handful of products. You can do this one of two ways. The first way is to manually search for each product and add it to the cart. So as you see, that's what we're doing. You do need Wi-Fi to use this app. So while you're at the party, simply connect to the hostess's Wi-Fi right when you get there. As you see, it's really not super time consuming to manually enter things into the cart. But what if we do it even faster? Now we're going to use that same order, but using the barcode feature. So to ensure that this works, all you have to do is open up your app, go to the products, edit by holding down that product, scroll down to the bottom and click the barcode icon. Hold the camera over the product's barcode and it saves that info to the product. So you'll do this for all of your inventory. And if you don't have inventory, you can use the barcodes from your demo products. All right, let's use the barcodes. So um, we're going to pretend we have everything on hand but the whip. So for the products you have on hand, simply click the barcode icon. And as you see, it's going really fast and it's going to use the camera to read the barcode. It immediately adds to the person's cart. So for the whipped that we don't have in stock, since we don't have the barcode to scan, we simply type it in to the search bar and it add it to the cart manually. Using the barcode feature seriously is going to make the ordering room go so much faster. Let's say you're doing a sale in your VIP group and have multiple people ordering at once. You can add multiple carts and go back and forth without losing progress. So to do that, add everything to the cart and instead of sending the invoice, click save, enter their name and then click save again. To view their cart, click save carts and that's how you could do multiple carts at once. Now to send out an invoice, once you have everything in the cart, click the purple charge button at the bottom. Here's the different forms of payment that you can do. Most of you will be accepting cards or cash at parties and then invoices if they're shopping um, through social media or outside of a party. So you're gonna click the purple button at the bottom to add a new customer, click individual, type in their name, their email, and then I'm just doing a mock one, so I'm just gonna put my name and email, but you will want their shipping address and stuff, but go ahead and click the purple next button when you're done entering in their information. Click next again, send invoice, and I always select due on receipt, but you can change the date if you want, and then that's it. So click the done button once it is finished sending, and then if you want to view what it looks like for the customer, go back to your homepage and then click invoices and click on the invoice and scroll down and you'll see a review of everything that she bought. Keep scrolling down and then you'll see the view invoice button. And it's going to have you log on to PayPal because it's going to be viewing it under a web browser. So enter in your login info. And then here is what it looks like on their end. Also, if you click on the invoices, I do always include um, this in my custom terms and then it'll automatically attach to every invoice. Also, what's really cool is that you can see when people look at your invoice, but under reports, it'll show you your total sales. It'll show you your top selling products. Okay, so the very last thing I want to share with you guys is how to mark an item as back order, meaning you need to ship to someone, and how to remind yourself that you already shipped that product. So in the mock order that I shared with you guys, my client received all of the products that night of the party minus the whipped. So how do I tell myself that I need to mail out that one whipped versus thinking she already got it. So when you're adding things to the cart, you can very easily add a note that says BO. So that's what I, I do. I put BO and that stands for back order. And then when I order the products, everything comes in and I package everything up. How do I tell myself that? Yes, I for sure mailed out that product versus forgetting. Did I mail out this product or did I not? Um, and potentially mailing her two of them. 
So once you have the product in that you ordered and you, so to tell yourself that you already mailed out a product, you're going to log into paypal.com. So you are not going to settle. You're going to paypal.com. And I personally use PayPal shipping. So I'm going here anyway, and I'm not going to talk about PayPal shipping any further than that, just because that's a whole completely separate training that we will do. But uh, PayPal shipping essentially saves you money. So you get discounted rates on shipping costs. So that's why I'm already going to PayPal anyway. So you click on sales, invoices. Now this will automatically take you to a new invoice, but you'll just click the back to invoice button and it's going to show you all of your open invoices. Okay, so you're going to click on an invoice. I'll click on my mock one. Now, if you remember in the video, I told you that since this was just a mock invoice, I just put in my name and email, but a real client is also going to include her shipping address. So if you're going to be using PayPal shipping, like a lot of us do, which like I said, I'm not going to go too much into that. Uh, your client will also have her shipping address. So you're coming here anyway. So for me, what I'm doing to remind myself that yes, I already know that her products, I'm adding a memo to myself and just typing in shipped. Click save. And now when I go back to my invoices, this invoice will now have this icon. So I'll be able to quickly see which invoices have that icon and which one don't. If they don't have that icon, that means I still need to mail it out. If they do have that icon, that means that I'm good. I already mailed it out. So this is a very nice visual to quickly see who I still need to package up and who I don't. So that is it, guys. I just wanted to give a very basic rundown of how to use PayPal Zettle. I think this is an awesome option because it is free and is a great alternative if you cannot use our company's point of sale system. If you have other questions, you're more than welcome to reach out and I'll be able to help.